My name is uh, Bill Abram. I'm a retired high school teacher. I uh, uh, retired uh, in 1987 to find out why a number of my students were being hit with uh, drugs, and I wondered where those drugs were coming from. And as a result of that, I found that behind the scenes in Canada, in the United States, is an organization that has no care for social issues. All they care for is making money, and the drugs were just part of that. And as I uh, looked into the situation of uh, the behind-the-scenes drug dealing, I discovered that the creation of money was also uh, in that big picture of control over people. The more I discovered uh, uh, the uh, machinations that uh, the international bankers go through to control us, the more I realized that the theft of our efforts, our resources, and our labors was phenomenal, was colossal. At that point, I got introduced to um, a graph that the Auditor General in Canada in 1993 put out, which showed the phenomenal theft that happens as a result of the, um, the power of interest and the sleight of hand economics of compounding interest. And I discovered this graph at that time, uh, which I would like to show you here, uh, of the degree of the theft that was taking place in Canada. Now this is the Auditor General's report of November 1993, and here in Canada this would put the, uh, uh, the sponsorship scandal to absolute shame. The sponsorship scandal does not compare with the theft that happens when a government, instead, instead of borrowing from itself, creating its own money, which only the government has the right to create, they give it over to private entities like the international banks or the private banks. The government prints a bond. The private banks then turn that bond into printed dollars, and then the government borrows those printed dollars back according to the bond. And from way back, 1867 to 1992, when this report was prepared, uh, Canada had to borrow for real spending no more than $37 billion. Yet, in 1993, our national debt stood at $423 billion. $386 billion of that was simply interest on interest. Now, if this isn't a, an unnecessary theft, I don't know what is. This is billions of dollars we're talking about. If I can fast track right up to today's situation, James Flaherty, our finance minister, has put out this particular booklet. This is uh, last year's uh, financial uh, uh, budget. and. Uh, our, our 2007 one has just been approved, but this was sent out to all the members of Parliament uh, across the country. And it's called Canada's New Government, Turning a New Leaf. Now, inside this particular uh, booklet is a statement of how much we pay in interest and how much our national debt is. Now. I have taken the numbers that are here. Uh, the interest that we had to pay in 2004-2005 was $34.1 billion on a national debt of $494.4 billion. The next year we paid roughly the same, $33.7 billion. That's 2005-2006. 6, 2007, 34.8 billion, and the projected uh, amount we'll pay in 2007, 2008, 30, a total of 
four billion dollars will be paid over that four-year period to bankers who from whom we've borrowed the money uh, to buy the goods and services that we need uh, for the country. Now, when you go back in history, you cannot help but find that statements time and time again, money exists not by nature but by law. And if money exists by law, why is it produced by the private banks then? What right do they have? Would you give it to the private banks or would you give it to the... Uh, uh, the police force? Would you give it to the mafia? Who would you allow to print the money that the nation needs if it is created by law? The only people who have the legal right to create money is the federal government or the government of the people because they are accountable to the people. And uh, we're only paying out this huge sum of interest because our governments fail to uh, abide by the law and print the money which only they have the exclusive right to. And in Canada, under in the Canadian Constitution of 1867, Article 91 states very clearly that only the government has the cre exclusive right to create the nation's money.